Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the, uh, the uh, Explorer profession, and uh, we're going to be having a look at the best way to kit out at least your Sidewinder, and then see what ships might be the best to move on to after the Sidewinder. Uh, well, the first one thing we want to do is jump into the outfitting department. And we're going to go jump over to the internals. Now, we already have down here the basic discovery scanner, which is one of the items that you're going to need, at the very least, to go and do explore exploration. Now, let's have a look in here and actually see what else there is. Uh, let's see, where are we? Here we go. We have an item called a detailed surface scanner. Now, what I think this is is um, it's a scanner that you use to scan planets and it gives you extra information about uh, the makeup of the planet like uh, mineral deposits and so on and it, which is uh, completely different to what the actual discovery scanners do here we've got the intermediate discovery scanner and what the discovery scanners do is you ju are just flying around either in real sp space or um, super cruise you put these on, a on uh, one of your fire buttons, uh, charge it up, let it complete, and when that does, it let it's like a sonar. It sends it sends off a pulse, and it lets you know what it what is around you. So then it comes up with like lots of different uh, undiscovered uh, astronomical objects. So then you have to go and then scan them specifically. But then you've got because we like you said we've got we start off with the basic discovery scanner then we have the intermediate discovery scanner and the advanced discovery scanner now what i think is the main difference between all of these is the range at which they uh, they work so i imagine uh obviously the basic discovery scanner is going to be the shortest range intermediate is going to be the intermediate range and the advanced is going to be the longest range but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stick with the basic discovery scanner for the moment. And we're also going to drop off the uh, cell cargo rack. And we're going to go and pick up a detailed surface scanner. Okie doke. Now. Down here, you can see that we have a, uh, a jump range of three. Uh, sorry, seven point three five, and that's not exactly the best when you're wanting to go to go around to doing exploring. It means you're going to have to do a lot more jumps and pot potentially waste a lot more fuel. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to go into the frame shift uh, drive section, and thankfully we have an A drive here, which would uh, put our jump range up to sixteen point one seven light years. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Obviously that's not something you're going to be able to use straight away, but for uh, the purposes of this video we're going to do this. But uh, right now we are over our power draw. So what I'm going to try and do first is I'm going to sell off the burst lasers. Because that's knocking down our power consumption. Not only that, but that's also increasing our jump range. Because um, I'm setting this up as an explorer, I don't intend to fight at all. I want to get as much jump range as I can out of this ship. There we go, that's both of them sold. So that's taken us up to a good amount of uh, jump range. And now um, and we're actually, uh, we are well under our available power usage. So what else we're going to do is we're going to have a look around and see if there's anything else we can have a look at. That uh, that will actually drop our mass, like power plant. Uh, the B power plant that drops our mass another one, another one ton. Uh, one point three tons down two tons. Wait a second. Ah no, that is yes, that's what it is. This one is actually uh, one ton, so this is the smallest. Yeah, that's not mean that doesn't mean it's going down one ton. That means it's going down, and the total tonnage is one ton. Right. Okay. I was getting confused about that beforehand. So we're going to buy that, so that's down another couple of tons in our ship. Uh, life support, let's have a look here. Uh, no, none of those. The B is taking us up to mass, and the second one, uh, the A one's keeping us on, exactly on. 
power distributor. Let's have a look here. No, no, okay. So, don't need anything there. Sensor suite. Okay, can't do anything there either. What we could do is possibly sell off the shield generator, and that would give us an even further jump range of nearly 20 light years. But, um, I'm not going to do that yet. So, I'm going to leave that be as in the moment. So what we have in here is we have the detailed surface scanner and the uh, basic discovery scanner. So we're going to exit out. Oh, looks like I've got to charge my shields back up. But what we've also got to do is go into the fire groups. And we've actually got to set up our basic discovery scanner onto one of our Shield's mouse buttons. Uh, either our mouse buttons or our jo uh, joystick buttons. I'm going to set that onto number two because that's the uh, the fire group I like for my scanners. Now that's pretty much everything we have. We're only using 63% of our ship's power, so I'm not uh, worried about anything else. So that's pretty much it. Now the next thing, that's pretty much well, that's pretty much it for uh, for the outfitting side of things. Now what we need to do now is we need to find a system in the galaxy map that has been uh, unexplored. So let us have a look around and see if we can find one that's, that's not been explored. Here we go. No system data. Wolf 1080. <laughs> How did you guess I was going to go for this one? <laughs> so there we go. We're going to make the jump over to uh, Wolf 1080 and we're going to go see what happens. Now, the one thing I have noticed, actually, before we jump out, is that the uh, detailed surface scanner doesn't actually have a, key, uh, a fire group or a keybind or anything, so I'm assuming that is a passive scanner. But we'll find out when we get there. I just realised that I, because of my uh, my increased Engine jump range, engaged. I don't actually need to plot a course. I can go straight there, Landing gear retracted. and that's what I plan to do. Okay, now the first thing you're going to notice as soon as we get into the system is that uh, well, first of all, we've come up again, up with a uh, newly discovered astronomical object, which is the sun. Now we've passively scanned that, so I haven't actually uh, actively scanned anything, which means I haven't actually um, pressed the button to do the scanning myself. And if we have a look over at the navigation panel, the only thing we can see in this system is one unexplored astronomical object here. Everything, all the rest of these are all set different systems, so there's nothing um, listed in this system at all. So now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, use our discovery scanner. Remember I bound this to, here we go, to fire group two, uh, to, yeah, weapon group two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my button to use it, and you can see it down there, charging, D-scanner charging. As soon as that bar fills up. Now, the fact that we didn't actually find anything whilst using the basic discovery scanner would indicate to me that there is nothing in range of the, uh, the basic discovery scanner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out again in a moment and we're actually going to uh, go and pick up the advanced discovery scanner and see if my theory is actually correct. But first of all, what I'm going to do is actually show you how you actually specifically scan the uh, astronomical objects that you discover with the discovery scanner. What you do is uh, you basically have to target them. You can either do that through the uh, no, no, sorry, it's th through the uh, navigation panel. Go over here and actually select lock destination, or you can just be facing them and press target ahead, such as this. Now you'll see down at the bottom left, it says unexplored scanning, scanning, unexplored scanning. So as soon as the scan finishes, all that information there will be uh, filled in. There we go. 
detailed scan and we've basically got a detailed scan analysis there so that was because we have the uh, detailed surface scanner so it tells us exactly what type of star it is exactly what it's made out of so the uh, universal cartographics will be a lot more interested in this scan data now that we have the uh, detailed surface scanner okay so here we are back at uh, Foo City again and we're gonna go have a look back in the outfitting department so we'll jump over to the internals and we're gonna go and upgrade the basic discovery scanner to the advanced discovery scanner now this thing is certainly not cheap it is one and a half million credits uh, the intermediate discovery uh, discovery scanner is uh, half a million and the detailed surface scanner is a quarter of a million so these uh, dis these uh, exploration exploratory tools are absolutely insanely expensive for a first time uh, explorer but after a while if you can get these uh, items I do believe they will be a massive um, asset to uh, your discovery work so like I said we're going to pick up the advanced discovery scanner and also uh, a thought occurred to me as well is um, if you're flying around uh, discovering things, uh, doing uh, exploratory work, you will quite often come into systems that have no orbitals, so you can't go and refuel there. So, uh, what I would possibly recommend is selling your shield generator and buying in its place. Uh, a fuel scoop. Now the first fuel scoop here is uh, only 309 credits but this is an extremely sl slow fuel scoop but it is great for first time uh, first time players. What I'm going to do is because I don't like waiting, actually no I can't actually because there's only the uh, basic fuel scoop so I'm going to have to use that as well. So. In our complete internal compartments, we've got a fuel scoop, detailed surface scanner, and an advanced discovery scanner. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back out again and head back to uh, Wolf 1080, and we're going to go try scanning again. Okay, so here we are, back in um, Wolf 1080. We'll have a quick look, double check whether am I. Uh, yep, I, my advanced discovery scanner is still uh, still set to my secondary fire button. So we'll charge it up, and we will see if we can actually spot anything. There we go. We've uh, discovered one more astronomical object, and what is that? Let's go and have a look. There it is, unexplored over there. It would appear to be a second uh, sun. So it would appear that this system... Let's have a quick look in... Uh, Fuel scooping. Fuel scoop disengaged. Let's have a look in the uh, system map. Yep, it would appear this is a, at least a binary system. So we're going to jump back out of here again. And we're going to go and every so often we are going to throw out the uh, discovery scanner to see if we can see anything else like planets um, asteroid belts and so on so it's always a good idea to actually throw up your your scanners every so often nope still nothing here but at the very least we have two stars but well, as soon as we get close to the star because you can see it is uh, <laughs> uh, 14,000 light seconds away so obviously I am going to uh, cut this down a little bit so you don't have to sit here and watch me fly the entire way there. Oh, and here we are. It seems that uh, the advanced discovery scanner seems to have a much, much longer scanning range uh, than the uh, basic discovery scanner. I'm able to scan this uh, star here from over 4,000 uh, light seconds away. Which is a lot greater range than uh, what I was expecting from uh, having used the uh, basic discovery scanner. Well, there we go. Got another detailed scan. We'll have to go and see how much the uh, 
Universal Carter Graphics will give us for that as well. Again, I'm going to throw the Discovery Scanner again and see if we can see anything. No, nothing yet. So, what we're going to do is, instead of actually taking up a lot of time in this system, we're going to go and jump out to another system that has been that has not been scanned. And we will f uh, try our luck again. Here we go. We have the uh, this particular system. I'm not even going to bother reading all that out. But we're going to go jump straight over there and we're going to try again. And if that doesn't work, we're going to move on to the next system. So here we are again in the uh, next sector. We're going to go ahead and scan this uh, this star as well as running off our discovery scanner. And we'll see what happens as soon as it completes. There we go, we found two new astronomical objects. And we finished the de uh, detailed scan here. Let's have a look here. Two unexplored. The closest one is 11 light seconds. So let's go over there and have a look. And there it is. We don't even need to travel over towards it to scan it. Now this would look like uh, a triple star system perhaps. So it looks like we have two... That's a brown dwarf. And up there... Let's go and have a look. But again, we don't seem to be finding any... any planets. So I'm going to keep throwing out the discovery scanner on the way over to, um, to scan this unexplored... Um, astronomical object over here. And uh, see if we can spot anything else. Because, as I said before, all these scans do have a range on them. But still, nothing yet. And there we go. The uh, Discovery Scanner has uh, kicked in and started doing its job. So I'm going to slow down a little bit so as not to approach too fast before the scan finishes and overshoot, possibly. We'll see what this is. There we go. It is another star. It's another brown dwarf. So we're going to speed up again. And I'm going to hit the discovery scanner yet again to see if I can spot anything else. No, still nothing. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the the map, select our next system, and we're going to go jump towards there. Oh, slow down. Fuel scooping. There we go. Discover another astronomical object. So we'll scan that one and do the throw out the uh, discovery scanner at the same time. We've got another two astronomical objects spotted. And this time we do seem to have something that isn't a star. Okay. There we go. And we've got another detailed scan completed. But first of all, uh, I'm going to go and uh, try and get myself back a bit of fuel. So we've gone a lot closer and scanned the, um, the next uh, star, which was uh, an M-class red dwarf. Now, the last thing we need to do to scan need to scan is uh, this unexplored astronomical object. Okay, so the scan has started. We've gotten to under 100 light seconds away. So I'm going to slow down and let the scanner finish its job. There we go. Detail scan complete. It's an icy planet. And that would appear to be everything that is in this system thus far. Let's have a look at the system map again. Yep, that would appear to be everything that is in this system. Yep, uh, it makes more. It makes sense. Uh, allegiance none, population zero. So yeah, there's nothing in this system. It's a dead system. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to jump away to a system at least 20 light years away because that's the uh, the range you need to get to to actually start being able to sell the data because apparently the closest systems will already know the, uh, the information about these systems even though they're not willing to sell it to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to a, another star system and uh, see how much this is worth with the uh, with a detailed surface scanner. Okay, so we've now landed down at uh, Kaku Orbital. And at least one of the systems we visited and scanned should be uh, 20 light years or more away. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a jump down and have a look into universal cartographics. There we go. One of them is uh, a good sis a good way away. And that is going to be giving us 2,000, uh, just, just shy of 3,000 credits, which isn't bad at all. It's a lot more than what you'd be getting if you did not have the uh, detailed surface scanner. Uh, so if you're just starting off and not using the detailed surface scanner, you're going to be getting a, a fraction of this. Well, you can see all these. Basically, all we really scanned in most of these are a couple of stars. But if you come across the uh, the systems with a lot of um, of objects in there, such as lots of planets, lots of uh, asteroid belts, then you are uh, you're going to be quids in. Now, as to what ships would possibly be better other than the uh, the Sidewinder, um, I would imagine the hauler might be a nice uh, ship to use. I know it's not exactly fast and it's not got any guns, but the main that's not the issue. The issue is it's got a very long jump range and quite a few internal com uh, internal uh, compartments. Here we go. It's got four internal compartments, which is one up on the on the sidewinder. So you can still have your shield if you want, and you can get a much ba a much nicer uh, fuel scoop. So it'll make uh, you can have all your scanners, your fuel scoop, and your shields, and not have to worry about things. And plus, you'll have a much longer jump range. I think um, uh, the maximum is definitely over twenty light years jump range, which is more than double what this. Well, it's not actually more than double. It's over what this ship currently has. Um, the next one I would recommend is possibly the uh, the Cobra, because that has a, a, a greater uh, stock jump range than the hauler and it also still has uh, six internal compartments so you can keep a lot in there as well and possibly do either a little bit of trading or something else on the side as well to help supplement your um, your earnings after that the one I would recommend is possibly not here uh, no it isn't but the uh, the adder might be a nice ship as well to try which I imagine with it being uh, very similar to the hauler in many respects. But the one you're going to be aiming for in the end is the Asp Explorer. Because that is going to have the, uh, I think it, I think if I remember correctly, it has one of the longest jump ranges of any of the ships in the game when fully kitted out. But yes, this has been uh, the me trying my hand at exploration and hopefully you guys have learned something from this. Um, so. If you have found this uh, video useful and enjoyable, please do consider hitting that like button because it really does help the channel out. And uh, also, please do consider hitting that uh, subscribe button because that really helps me. Thank you very much, guys. Um, this has been Chaos Wolf. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.